with that crowd here. I'm going to have a little bit of a talk about um, uh, oscilloscope and basic usage. And um, I would also like to like answer the question as to um, when do you need an oscilloscope? What is an oscilloscope? Well, basically, if you take it uh, over simplistically, an oscilloscope is a device that shows the varying and how voltage varies over time. And that's an important thing to take take with with when one moves forward with an oscilloscope. So, um, and of course, from that perspective, if you um, basically have um, known quantities like pure DC voltage or AC voltage, then um, basically measuring such way um, like AC waveforms, um, it's better to do it with a multimeter if you just want to have the RMS value or, or the uh, specific DC voltage you're dealing with, so then you actually don't need an oscilloscope. Um, also, if you are mainly interested in uh, data communication, like signals that transport data, like uh, we can take examples like a serial protocol like the SPI, or let's say you have a processor bus, or you have uh, uh, other kind of profi bus, other kinds of serial connections, then um, and you're mainly interested in the data being transported. Uh, and in the case of um, uh, parallel buses, then you might actually want to have multiple input channels for the digital values. Then it's better to have um, a logic analyzer. Uh, this is a, the, the logic analyzer module, and then you connect it with USB to the PC, and then you have, have software to operate it. Um, if you're into radio technology, then basically looking at how a voltage varies over time is probably not that useful because you're interested more in like frequency response so then it would be better to have a spectrum analyzer actually for that type of work. Um, so anyway if you um, decide that that's what you want to do is to um, analyze voltage variation over time then uh, having an oscilloscope to visualize such waveforms is very good. Um, or there are many types of oscilloscopes, like there's a PC, purely PC based, so you you have a module similar to the um, logic analyzer, which actually has the probe input, and then it connects with USB to the PC, and then you do all the, all the um, controlling on the PC. You can have them have, have oscilloscopes that are more like a flat panel uh, display, um, and um, that has all the embedded functionality. Uh, you can have um, like a, a classical uh, oscilloscope, which is similar to this, and um, the classical oscilloscopes, which are dedicated for oscilloscope functionality, come in actually to improve. Uh, they came in two variants. One is um, purely digital, so basically the analog signal goes in and then it gets to convert to a digital uh, information, and then the digital information is processed and handled in the device. Or you had um, older style um, oscilloscopes which are analog. Um, the thing is that I haven't really seen any analog oscilloscopes. They're, they're, they're probably, there's no idea to sell them as new. The, the, the digital oscilloscopes have basically taken over the market completely. So uh, even as used on eBay and stuff, I, I don't know if it's really worth having an analog scope nowadays, taking into account that you can get a digital scope with reasonable for hobbyist performance and for a reasonable price. So anyway, how do you connect the oscilloscope to something you're going to be measuring? And, um, basically what you use is you use a um, oscilloscope probe and it has one end which you connect to the oscilloscope. It also has an option to um, adjust it for calibration purposes, and I'll be demonstrating that a little bit later. And then uh, you have the end that you actually plug into the circuit, which has a, the grounding part, which should go to the reference ground you have. And then you have uh, the actual measurement tip, which can also be covered with, with a hook functionality, so you can actually hook onto the circuit. And um, standard probes, they have a, a, a two modes. You have the so-called um, 
times one, which means that the signal goes as is into the oscilloscope, or a dampening, which is like 10, uh, division by 10. And then if you have a, like in this case, we have a multi-channel digital oscilloscope, then you can actually put these color coding rings um, so you can actually identify which probe is which. So a little bit about measurement safety. I mean, oscilloscope is a step up in terms of that you really need to know what you are measuring and what you're going to stick your probe into. Um, so I would say that for a hobbyist use, never go near voltages that are more than 60 volts. Um, grounding is an important um, issue to take into account. So this here is actually um, electrical ground on the oscilloscope. So there's no galvanic isolation, so this is not usually isolated from the um, electrical network that it's connected to. So this is actually grounded. Um, so when I'm talking about power supplies with galvanic insulation, isolation, then it's usually these power bricks. They've got a transformer of one kind or another. So then you get actually insulated from the mains voltage. And, um, Then you need to be um, careful when you're when you're actually connecting to the measured circuit. You actually need to know, okay, what is what is my ground reference and how that is connected. So you need to actually be very clear on that. And then when you're poking around with the um, probe, then you need to be careful that you don't stick it into things. Uh, you know, I mean, things to look out for are um, circuits which potentially have um, traces or components which are connected to a power source that can deliver uh, high amperages and, and that can be the case in PCs. For example, a PC power supply can deliver 20 amps on, on certain rails, so you don't want to be pushing the probe into something and then accidentally slipping and then short-circuiting out something because it will it'll weld, weld the component, possibly short-circuit something and then you'll be blowing up capacitors and stuff. So we're, we're, And also when you have circuits which are connected to batteries and um, uh, or large capacitances also can um, cause risks. So I mean, know what you're measuring. Um, stay under the voltage limits. That's usually um, good advice. And um, you know, so in some cases you would like to um, use AC voltages. Then take into account that if you're using a variac, a variac does not provide galvanic insulation isolation. So you know, poking the ground lead into the wrong uh, place will actually cause the um, the ground over protection in your house to trip. So, so vari variox is not variac does not provide galvanic isolation. So anyway, that's the rant about safety. Always important to consider with with the oscilloscope type devices. So probe calibration. Like I briefly mentioned that there has a calibration point here, which is basically a screw where you where you adjust the calibration and um, and of course if you um, are a little bit sort of trickster then you can actually <laughs> change it <laughs> to frustrate your friends. Um, so anyway let's um, start with um, the startup process and um, let's do the um, calibration. So I've already connected the probe, so input channel 1, and then the ground goes into the ground reference point, and then the um, probe gets connected to the uh, plus side of the um, calibration signal, and then we uh, start the oscilloscope up. So anyway, here we have it um, running, and then of course the thing is that with uh, any kind of oscilloscope it could have been in use, so people could have been using it for various things, could be different configurations and different channels have been in use. So basically uh, if you have a um, digital oscilloscope there's usually a function to bring things back to their default state. So in, in this oscilloscope we have, um, so we have the default option here, so we just press that and then it basically resets everything to default and then as you see you automatically get um, channel 1 activated and then it's already reading in the signal and it's already synced 
so it's uh, actually quite good to to um, know where the default functionality is. Now, um, the more complicated an oscilloscope is, the more functionality it will have, especially if it's a digital oscilloscope. It might actually have functions that go beyond the oscilloscope itself. It can actually have an embedded signal generator or, or yeah, lots of different features, and um, I'll be covering some of those in later videos. Um, but in this case, I mean, the, when you're doing just the basic probe calibration, um, is to focus on the basics. So basically you can ignore all these buttons here because you're not going to be using any of these channels and you're not going to be using an external trigger input so you can just forget about forget about pretty much this whole group here. Also if you're not going to do internal settings you can forget about all these functionality here except for the default uh, one. And then when it comes to uh, trigger trigger positioning then you only need these these three buttons here and then this group here. So anyway, um, let's have a look, if we see if we can improve um, what we see with the um, calibration signal here, so we can see if the probe is actually calibrated. So, so here you set the voltage divisions. So as you see, you can increase or decrease. Depending. So anyway, this looks like a quite a good signal. And. Um, when it's talking about triggering on the signal, then you actually have the um, uh, triggering. So here, this it shows a line where it's going to try and trigger. And um, of course, did, uh, when it's a software-driven oscilloscope, it will try and reset the trigger to something that it can actually use automatically. But, um, you can actually, in some signals, it's actually useful to be able to say, okay, now I'll trigger on this reference line, and then it analyzes the, uh, the signal it's getting the, uh, on that line or around that line, and then it will um, trigger, which means triggering is that it stops the um, signal in the display. It starts it from a sp sweep from a certain place with a certain time division, and then it draws it so that it actually stays in one place. Now, if you, of course, if, you ha using, if you're viewing signals which have um, protocol, in, uh, protocols laid on top of them, or encodings, or or stuff. Then um, you'll have varying success on being able to trigger, uh, to be able to stop the signal in a specific location. And that's actually a great thing with digital oscilloscopes because they have lots of built-in different features for triggering on both video signals and and even even like network package tra package traffic and stuff. They won't show you the data that's encapsulated like in the I2C signal or something, but the, it'll be able to show you the IT, so in IT. It will understand that protocol to the extent of being able to make a static picture. But anyway, here we see that the um, calibration isn't in good shape since I messed it up. Readjust it. And that should do by the screw in the probe. Well, the objective is to adjust it as best you can so that the line is straight. So now you have a well calibrated um, probe. And basically the only thing you need to check with these, um, with the um, probe setup is you actually... Oh, it's kind of difficult looking at the scope from the side. But anyway, here are a few points that need to be taken into account. That, um, what coupling are you using? Is it DC or AC? So if you have a mixed DC-AC voltage, then you want to make sure your coupling is DC. And then the only other thing to care about is basically what is the um, multiplier on the probe. Are you using times one mode or times ten mode? And then you're um, pretty much ready to go. So, um, you know, people try and uh, present oscilloscopes as being incredibly complicated devices, and yes, okay, they are if you're using the very advanced features, but I mean, this is the absolute basic usage. And, and try and do this uh, mental exercise of, oh, it's got a lot of buttons and functions, but then say, okay, what do I actually need? And switch off everything you don't need, and make sure you return the oscilloscope to its default mode. I mean, if, if you come to an oscilloscope where there's like four channels connected to a random circuit, you know, and it's uh, doing Fourier analysis and all that stuff, and then you, you know you you don't even know where your starting point is. So then, you know, do the do the disconnect all the probes. You know, start from the basics. And um, learning each oscilloscope is a little bit of a stepwise activity. 
So um, you know, I, I would suggest start from the absolute basics. You know, one channel, one probe. Start with the probe calibration so you get a feeling of how things are um, set up. So anyway, what we could do is that I mean, basically, uh, when it comes to the signal form management, then you basically you select the how, how many volts each division up is. And then you actually can um, adjust uh, where the signal is residing, but that's more important when you have multiple multiple channels connected. And then you can actually say, okay, what time division do you want to have? So of course, if you're looking at a signal, this won't tell you much because it's displaying too many pulses. But I mean, then you can just expand it out like that. And then this is just to adjust crosswise its stop position. And then you can also stop. Um, you can stop it. So now it's frozen. So if you have a triggered signal and it's on the display, you can just stop it. Uh, you can, uh, very useful function is the single trigger. So it will take one signal pass, it will uh, sync with it, and then it will just display it. And then this is auto calibration, so it will actually itself um, reset everything so you have the best possible um, display of the signal. And um, some people call this the cheat button. <laughs> I think it's actually actually for when you're starting with measuring an unknown signal, then and it's actually you know set defaults, use auto sync. Or let's say what what was it called? Out of scale, sorry. So, um, you know, defaults out of scale. Yes. <laughs> and you get to get to a good starting point. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So, um, I'm going to connect in a signal and then we just have a little bit of a look at that, and, uh, and I think that'll be a wrap. So anyway, I'll take that signal generator, a sine sinus wave, um, 10 volts, uh, 50 hertz, and then you see that this is not displaying anything because I haven't connected it yet. So let's connect it up. And as you see, you know, it's not really displaying very nicely. It's jumping all over the place and really not showing a nice sinus curve. So then I'm going to hit the auto scale. And then it finds it. That, of course, very easy signal for it to trigger on, so it won't have any. Uh, <laughs> not surprising. Of course, if you're uh, measuring random signals on a trace or something on a circuit board and you don't really know what the signal is in form or factor, then uh, you might have a problem with getting it visualized. As I said, especially if it's carrying data. Um, but anyway, that's pretty much it for a basic oscilloscope. So. Um, as I said, more functionality is contained in this device. We covered in later videos, as either as part of projects or as part of dedicated videos on a certain oscilloscope um, subject. Anyway, that was the basic rundown on on oscilloscope. Um, hopefully, it gives you some thoughts. Like, do you need one or not? And um, if you do, then it's all the basic functionality. I will be following up with other videos, either in projects or dedicated ones on the more advanced features in this one. So if you're interested, consider subscribing. And, um, you know, tell other people that might be thinking about an old skill scope, um, or to get one, or what it's used for. And, um, buy me a coffee. It would be nice to get some more caffeine. I'd make these videos during the evenings and nights, trying to stay awake. And, um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.